On this episode, we talk about 71 years old podcasts and what happens when you get sick. You ask questions and I answer them. This is the Ask Gary V Show. What's up, everybody? This is Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this is episode 74 of the Ask Gary V Show. Uh, had a great time in Napa Valley this weekend. Big shout out to everybody there. Really enjoyed that. Really enjoy the fact that Stefan is behind the camera today. I don't want to look at D-Rock. That's good. Very excited about my uh, video going, I, I don't want to use the word viral, but we have a video going crazy on Facebook, my Monday video, which we also put up on YouTube. Stefan, get it up here. Though I think D-Rock might be editing this. I did see something going on. Who's, is D-Rock editing? I'm going to start a little, a little double combo editing for episode 74, India. Show India. I always like when we show her. Let's get in to the show. Brendan asks, Gary, what's your take on podcasting? You're playing in the space, but not all in. Not worth it yet? Brendan, great question. Uh, the only reason I'm not all in on the podcast right now is because I'm too busy. Meaning, everybody has to kind of decide opportunity cost. And for me, I think I over-index on video. I perform better on video, I like video more, I like this whole thing. Right, you weren't ready for that, Stefan. That's what happens, I'm rooking you up. Uh, So, I'm half pregnant because I'm transcribing this show into audio form. Big shout out to everybody who's listening on the podcast because I know a ton of you are on the way to work. I think podcasting is a huge phenomenon. Uh, obviously, the smartphone has changed the dynamic. People can take it with them when they're running and working out. People are clearly Bluetoothing it up in their cars, um, public transportation. Podcasting has clearly exploded over the last 24 months. Things like Serial became a a national phenomenon at a podcast form. It's fun for me to watch because podcasting was really big in 04 and 05. If you think about what uh, what Ev Williams did, he did Odeo in between Blogger and Twitter. That was podcasting. I'm all about podcasting in its traditional form as an audio vehicle. To me, I think it's a huge play. I highly recommend a lot of people doing it. Let's not forget, a hell of a lot more people can do the audio version versus the video version here. This takes really another, uh, not another, a different dimension and skill set, one that I think I own, thus, I go this route and then use the audio to create two pieces of content, video and the audio form. And, 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 from, and by the way, the podcast listeners, please hit up Twitter and give me your feedback. I, I think I've been trying very hard, even the opening, like instead of saying you're watching episode 74, I'm saying this is episode, like I'm trying to make it a little more native for both. So I'm trying the best I can to be podcast oriented in the form of your question. It is a byproduct of it being video first. Um, If I had time to do two separate shows like so many people have asked me to, I would. I don't see the ROI return on just audio um, for what I'm doing for a living right now. Um, And so that's this. Uh, That was, I was held up a pillow that says VaynerMedia for all you podcast people. (laughs) Let's go to the next question. Hey Gary, Spiker Helms here. I was wondering, if you created a social media platform, what would be your key feature and why? Can't wait to hear your response. See ya. See ya. Um, So I've long had an idea, and I'm gonna share it with you guys, which is the notion of a social network that looked like Instagram, um, but more like path, like you could put any piece of content, could be a picture, a video, uh, audio file, more, more content agnostic, so not just picture or video, but also the ability to do audio on top of that. But the whole website, the the whole app, the, the whole, social network was predicated on the notion that you could only speak once a day for in any 24 hours. So as soon as you put out a piece of content, you would no longer be out able to put out another piece of content until 24 hours later. Because my belief is that the supply and demand of noise is the real issue with social networks. Path went down how many people you follow. I think it's the amount of pieces of content. I still think it's gonna be a big business. I still think that restrictions is where the action is for the short term and I would not be confused if we all look back at this video and talk about how I predicted somebody going and executing this billion dollar idea. I think the restriction of one piece of content a day is where it's at because it forces all of us as content providers, which all of us are, to put out the best piece of quality content because it's that restriction. Plus, there would be oomph behind it. Imagine I'd say happy birthday, Alex, and that was the only thing I could say that day. Wow, in a world where there's so many many other things I want to put out. So 
Uh, my social network would be uh, predicated on one piece of content per person a day. Phone for Life asks, Gary, I'm 71 years old. How can I filter years of exciting adventures and experiences into value that someone would actually be interested in? Carolyn, first of all, that is my favorite picture that has been put up on Instagram so far. It's a phenomenal picture. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for listening, watching the show. Uh, uh, by the way, this is a good time to just say, get your questions on the show using Instagram. Look at that execution as inspiration. Um, look, I, I don't know. Uh, you know, are your 71 years of experience interesting? Does anybody give a crap? I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, I just went from such a lovely place to such a negative place, throwing curveballs out there like we do on Mondays. Uh, Monday show, uh, Monday video. Uh, that's two times you gotta put in their stuff on if you're doing the editing. I don't know which one's your half and which one's the other half. Uh, so, Carol, really what it comes down to is value. It's all value exchange. You know, I very much value somebody who's lived 71 years long for life advice just on living, right? But what also matters is how you're gonna communicate it and in what form are you gonna monetize it? Do you wanna put out a show where you answer questions or put out content or tell stories, but then how are you gonna monetize it? Advertising? I mean, there's just so many open-ended questions that need to be asked of you uh, based on your question, but here's what I would say. Uh, there's a lot of ways to make money. You can have subscription, you can have coaching, you can sell content, you can sell advertising, you can build up equity by putting out content and putting on a conference. There's a ton of ways. You know, I really do think I'm one of the golden examples of how to make money without directly selling it. Meaning, again, there's a lot of my contemporaries who sell ebooks or white papers or access to their VIP place. I do none such things. I put out the content at scale, hence this show, but then it builds brand leverage that allows me to charge a lot of money to public speak. Or when my book comes out, it allows me to have a big fan base to get a leverage of a big upfront where I don't even need all the books to sell though I want to fulfill that contract. Um, it gave me the leverage to start a social media agency with my brand equity that then I operated around. There's a lot of ways to make money. You've got to decide how. If that's even your goal, I'm making the assumption because it's a business-oriented show, um, but it's all about content, baby. It's all about content. And what you're putting out matters in two forms. One, is it valuable to an audience? As value is subjective, but two, how do you want to communicate? Is it video form? Is it audio form? Is it through amazingly cute and amazing Instagram photos? Like, what is it that you do? There's that Moments in New York, or what's that guy, uh, People of New York? Humans of New York. Humans of New York. That was just pictures on Instagram that led to a big book deal. Like. How do you communicate, do people like that, and then how do you decide to make money on it? That's really the game. Rob asks, Gary, what is the Facebook equivalent of writing the hashtag? Rob with two Bs, first of all, India. India, is it true? Is it true that Rob with two Bs pisses you off that there's two Bs? I just want to know why there's two Bs. Now, that's how his parents named him. I mean, yeah. this is a tough place for you to go as a girl named India. It's true, it's true. All right, so just, just wanted to establish I that. To I mean, you're not Karen. Um, sorry, Karens. Uh, Rob with two Bs. It sounds like this is a little bit of a black hat, you know, or at least gray hat, Facebook hack, growth hacking move, which, listen, I believe in being smart and effective. That seems to be. Um, it's an interesting tactic, but you've nailed it and you edited your own post, so you nailed it. You realize that, cool, okay, so there's some tool that's telling you this video of a kid falling in the snow is going viral, why don't you just take it and post it, which will then work because humans react to the same things, which will then boost your edge rank, right, which allows other content that is around fitness to be seen by more people. So that would be the value of it, but you're right, if you're putting out, if you're a fitness play, like look, if I and Gary Vaynerchuk's fan page start putting out like penguins falling off trees and like giraffes eating like Sour Patch Kids, like you know, like you know, ice skaters falling into the water but then getting saved or like you know, the Mentos and Pepsi thing like, yeah, I mean, that would bring maybe some general awareness but it would also dilute why people signed in for my channel. You know, like, it, you know, if Spike TV now started playing, you know, like soap operas, Maybe they do okay, or a reality, this was the reality TV thing that a lot of people struggled with. Like, what do people watch you for? Um, I think media is becoming agnostic, so I think everybody can play in a lot of genres, so I think the risk is actually better than it was three or four years ago, but I do think that you can dilute your brand and you can get away from it, and if you're a fitness channel, I mean, look, let's take a step back. What are you trying to accomplish? You know, like, like 
we're all happy here. Andy just texted me, I think we're gonna get a million organic views on the video and I'm like, cool. But is that accomplishing what I want? Are the right million people gonna see my Monday morning motivation video? Link, three, hat trick. Uh, you know, yes, but what am I trying to achieve? I'm trying to find like-minded business, hustle, um, growing your base and be appreciative, gratitude people. I'm trying to grow more of my audience. You may get a million views on that penguin jumping off a tree, but did they stay for your fitness? If they don't, then you really accomplished nothing. Hey Gary, I'm sick today. And I was just curious if you ever get sick. Maybe you really are a bionic man. If you do get sick, how do you handle that? How do you hustle when you're sick? Really sick. Ryan, first of all, I hope you feel better. I mean, you look like shit in that video. Um, you know, <laughs> first of all, big shout out to Lizzie Vaynerchuk because in the last 11 years that I've been married, I have not been sick. I think it has a lot to do with the fact that Lizzie tries to get me to wash my hands and the fact that I don't have a weird draft coming in like I had in my old apartment, which I think caught me a couple <laughs> times. I mean, I, I, you're talking to an old school Eastern European kid who actually thinks that getting sick and being sick is actually psychology. I think the brain is the most powerful tool. Like, I know the answer to this is not true, but I do feel like I, I'd be lying if I didn't think there's some way that I'm stopping myself from getting sick. Like, in the same way that I used to be able to get myself sick to get out of school, and I don't mean like, oh, my tummy hurts. I mean, in this weird, <laughs> yeah, I'm going somewhere. I've never said this out loud. This is actually even scary to say out loud. I'm so convinced that the brain is this powerful, I used to be able to create a temperature. And I know that every logical person, including myself, I literally just said bullshit, but I saw it. I mean, and sure, sometimes I put it up to the lamp and that's how I did it, but there was a couple of times where I would just psych my, even right now, I just started doing it and my stomach turned a little bit. I'm not kidding. Guys, the brain is a sick thing. So I guess the answer to the final question is, you know, you don't hustle when you get sick. In the same way you don't hustle when you get sleep. You know, we've got that quote card that did really well, right? That quote where I'm like, it's not what you do, you know, it's not how many hours you're awake, it's what you do within them. I'm thrilled to get six or seven hours of sleep. I love when people think I'm a three or four hour guy. I'll take eight every night because in those other 16, I will dominate your face. I love people who sleep four hours, but like chill. And, I, and chilling is like just not doing something important for 40 minutes or like having a conversation on the trading room floor for 30 minutes about the big game or what the fuck happened in the Oscars last night. Who gives a shit? Execute. And so, by the way, who gives a shit for me? I'm purely focused on my thing. Some people like 30 minutes of talking about the Oscars because it breaks up their day. That's their rest. You do you. But let me say this. When you're sick or when you're sleeping, rest. Your body's telling you something. And so, like weirdly, maybe I was sick once in the last 11 years, I was pumped. Let me just say that again because I don't know if everybody understood that. I weirdly wish I was sick one day this year. I would really enjoy the time off. I'd enjoy relaxing and the kids come, you know, Nisha comes home at three. Like it'd be fun, it'd be fun. Um, but, but there's something subconsciously that's really trying to not allow me to do that. In a world where I take 100 plus flights where that place is like, I don't know, I've like, you know, remember how a couple episodes I, I said that the 20 to 30 year old Gary Vee is soft compared to me? That guy did get sick, now I don't. And I do think it has a lot to do with my focus on it. So I do think you can out hustle your sickness to some degree, but when you succumb to it, because at some level <laughs> we all do, um, I think you need to just relax and enjoy it. Great. Question of the day. A couple things. Actually, let's go. Actually, you know what? I'm going back a little bit. One thing I'm not getting out of the questions today, which I ask once every 20 or 30, is I need a critique of the show. We had Casey the other day as a guest. Um, it's been a little bit sporadic because I've been traveling a lot. Why don't we do an episode 74, State of the Union, of where the show is at? Um, how you feeling? What, you, what would you like to see from me? And I'd also like a little banter. You could talk about being sick, you could talk about the Oscars last night, and you could talk about my Monday motivation video. That's what's acceptable in the comments. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them. Oh crap, wait, subscribe! I need subscriptions because I can't push this many right hooks in social, so subscribe!